This is a video short about using Bloom's taxonomy and the Keen framework. You're a curriculum designer and you need tools. Bloom's taxonomy is one of those tools. So let's start by choosing an engineering topic. Here I've got my handy Rolodex. Let's grab a topic out of here. All right, so we'll grab something from L and it is linear momentum. Before we begin determining learning outcomes for linear momentum, there are two important notes. First, the taxonomy has undergone extension and revision. And second, Bloom's is not a pedagogy. It's designed for outcomes. That's in contrast to a pedagogy, which is the method that you might engage in to achieve the learning outcomes. It's really a three-step process, right? First, you need some design tools so that you can develop educational objectives. Then, you need to select some pedagogies so that you can help get your students there through a process. And then third, you need to assess the results so that you can, and your students, can improve. Whether a pyramid or a staircase, everyone seems to love a pyramid, Bloom indicates ascending levels of what's been called higher orders of thought. A learning objective requires higher orders of thinking from remembering to understanding to applying to analyzing to evaluating and creating. The topic is linear momentum. Here's the setup. Object 1 is twice the mass of object 2. They collide. We want our students to learn about this interaction on multiple levels. We might simply want to assess the student's ability to remember a related equation. Sure, it's a low bar, but sometimes that's all that's needed. Or maybe we would like to assess our students' understanding of the implications. The equation suddenly means something, and now they see the impact. We might want to know if students can apply knowledge, particularly in new situations. Experiments are great for this, right? All right, wait for it. Analysis is a glorious part of engineering and certainly a primary focus of undergraduate engineering education, but it's sort of the unintentional default assessment for engineering. Blooms pushes me away from using only this assessment type. How often do we put our students in a decision-making position so that they can thoughtfully evaluate the pros and cons and decide upon a course of action? It doesn't have to be a project, but context helps. By the way, Note to self, there may not be a right or wrong answer. Assess the thought process instead. Finally, you may have educational objectives that call for an assessment of what a student or team creates. It's often projects that promote this higher order of thinking, but not always. For example, the creation of a reflection about a topic can be assessed. Does the creation meet a need? Does it fit a context? To assess creations, rubrics are indispensable and can certainly include lower levels. Did the students evaluate? Did they analyze? We're still working on step one, getting educational objectives. We can combine Bloom's taxonomy with the keen outcomes. Let's see how. What does the combination look like? Here's a handful of examples. Assess student understanding of what is important in problem solving as they explore contrarian views of accepted solutions. With the right assessment intention, you can meaningfully assess understanding, even if no calculations are required. Or you could teach toward and assess a student's ability to analyze trends as they demonstrate curiosity about our changing world. It's a future look. With an intentionality and the right instrument, you could teach toward and assess a student's understanding of a technical implication on society, economics, technology, and their futures. Or how students apply concepts across a curriculum. For example, that would be integrating information from many sources to gain some insight. So you could think in terms of momentum, will they correctly recognize that the momentum equation works for fluids too? If your pedagogical method is aimed toward opportunity and impact, then you can assess a student's ability to create designs that identify opportunities to create societal and economic value. There's a bit more to this that you might not have anticipated. How was Bloom's taxonomy formed? In fact, Benjamin Bloom was the editor on a collection of these classifications, and he focused on what was called the cognitive domain. The work was done in total with a collaboration of about 34 authors, some of which would later publish classifications for other domains, specifically the affective and psychomotor learning domains. 
In total, they would address the way in which students would change their thinking, their feelings, and their actions. In particular, Crathwall's contribution is useful for our work in incorporating mindset. It highlights attitudes, dispositions, and motivations. It's a design tool for targeting your educational objectives and learning outcomes. Now you've seen Crathwall's taxonomy for the effective domain. We can also take that and combine it with keen outcomes to develop educational objectives. Let's see how. Here we go. You can assess how students receive information without being prompted or through compliance. It's part of curiosity, right? Do they seek out information? Can you design educational in interventions that promote this behavior? We think so. Can you use a teaching method that emphasizes value creation for others and then assesses how students respond to failure? What about requiring the integration of information from many sources and then assessing how students value the opinions of others? Within connections, there's a portion of the Keen framework, the habits of mind, that include managing and assessing risk. This could tie into a learning objective that requires an organized view of values. And finally, check out this statement. The idea of characterization in the effective domain means that the student acts consistently due to an internal belief, can articulate a philosophy or worldview, can break down complex situations and respond accordingly based on values. They develop and live by a code of personal behavior. And that is pretty much mindset. So, you can see both taxonomies, both Bloom's and Crathwall's, and both of these are design tools for learning objectives. Now you can see how they both can be coupled to the keen learning outcomes. Let's say that you've designed a learning outcome, or perhaps multiple learning outcomes, for each of those topics, the cards we were talking about. Now step two requires a pedagogy, an instructional method, a way to help your students get there. Here are some. Active and collaborative learning, problem-based learning, project-based learning, case-based learning, and the list goes on. That's good. We need a number of methods, the evidence of their effectiveness, and the wisdom when to use them. But we also need experiments with new approaches, especially those that can be connected to the tapestry of educational thought. So, suppose you want to connect to a pedagogy that promotes entrepreneurial thinking. We call this method Entrepreneurially Minded Learning, or EML. Using EML as a pedagogy, you can foster an entrepreneurial mindset, one that focuses on teaching through opportunity and impact. There's lots of other facets, too, some contained in the Keen framework and others that you'll discover or even invent yourself. As someone once said, education is not filling a pell, but instead it's igniting a fire.